Hi, I'm Kelsey, MDPC's Director of Global Outreach. Here's some of what's coming up at MDPC. Summer means mission trips, and spots are still available. Current 7th and 8th graders kick off the mission season with a week in San Antonio, starting May 30th. We'll partner with Blueprint Ministries again to work on home build and get to know local families. Then in June, high schoolers depart for beautiful Arkansas. Our mission work there will be a combination of construction labor and relational ministry with Student Life Camp at John Brown University. Later that month, sixth graders wrap up the summer trips with a weekend of service in our own city of Houston, and juniors and seniors have an opportunity to backpack through the mountains of Colorado. These trips are such a great time for getting to know other students, and even better than that, for taking your relationship with Jesus to a whole new level. Sign up today at youth.mdpc.org. Hi, I'm Rachel Poiske, Associate Pastor for Children's Ministries. We've got lots of really fun things for your preschooler this summer. We have a preschool serve day that's going to be on May 26th. On June 26th, get all your little princesses ready for a princess preschool party. And then we also are going to have for the boys a special boys splash day on June 30th. We can't wait to see you and your preschooler at these fun events where we can celebrate and also learn about God's Word together. Don't forget that this Saturday, May 22nd, we're traveling to Iran for a virtual mission trip with PARS Theological Center. God has been doing some incredible things in Iran recently. Despite outright persecution, Christianity in that country is growing faster than ever, and it's creating a hunger for God's Word that feels like something out of the Book of Acts. This is such an exciting time in God's kingdom, and I hope you'll join me to hear more about it. Visit virtualtrip.mdpc.org for more details. You know that friend that said they'd never set foot inside a church? Well, bring them next Sunday in 945 service plus the 1115 Spanish service will be held outdoors on the MDPC field. All the morning services will be live streamed online, but we hope that you'll join us in person for Houston's beautiful spring weather. You can see lots more ways to get involved by visiting events.mdpc.org. Also, follow us on social media for prayer requests, event updates, and all things MDPC. Hi, I'm Kelsey, MDPC's Director of Global Outreach. Here's some of what's coming up at MDPC. Summer means mission trips, and spots are still available. Current 7th and 8th graders kick off the mission season with a week in San Antonio, starting May 30th. We'll partner with Blueprint Ministries again to work on home build and get to know local families. Then in June, high schoolers depart for beautiful Arkansas. Our mission work there will be a combination of construction labor and relational ministry with Student Life Camp at John Brown University. Later that month, sixth graders wrap up the summer trips with a weekend of service in our own city of Houston, and juniors and seniors have an opportunity to backpack through the mountains of Colorado. These trips are such a great time for getting to know other students, and even better than that, for taking your relationship with Jesus to a whole new level. Sign up today at youth.mdpc.org. Hi, I'm Rachel Poiske, Associate Pastor for Children's Ministries. We've got lots of really fun things for your preschooler this summer. We have a preschool serve day that's gonna be on May 26th. On June 26th, get all your little princesses ready for a princess preschool party. And then we also are gonna have for the boys a special boys splash day on June 30th. We can't wait to see you and your preschooler at these fun events where we can celebrate and also learn about God's word together. Don't forget that this Saturday, May 22nd, we're traveling to Iran for a virtual mission trip with PARS Theological Center. God has been doing some incredible things in Iran recently. Despite outright persecution, Christianity in that country is growing faster than ever, and it's creating a hunger for God's Word that feels like something out of the Book of Acts. This is such an exciting time in God's kingdom, and I hope you'll join me to hear more about it. Visit virtualtrip.mdpc.org for more details. You know that friend that said they'd never set foot inside a church? Well, bring them next Sunday in 945 service plus the 1115 Spanish service will be held outdoors on the MDPC field. All the morning services will be live streamed online, but we hope that you'll join us in person for Houston's beautiful spring weather. 
You can see lots more ways to get involved by visiting events.mdpc.org. Also, follow us on social media for prayer requests, event updates, and all things MDPC. Well, good morning, church. It's so good to be here in worship with each and every one of you. Let's all stand and worship together. have a seat for a second. If you want to just check in with what's going on here, we have an app that you can, if you haven't downloaded the app already, we invite you to go to wherever you download your apps and get that and join in with us. You can check in, you can see what's going on in the life of our church, but that helps us to know who's here, 
who's in the service and who's joining with us today. And we just want you to be a part of what's going on here at MDPC. This is uh, an exciting Sunday for us. This is our Legacy Weekend. And a while back, many years ago, they set up uh, just this time for giving, which the Legacy Fund goes above and beyond our regular tithes because the church is able to give uh, to a lot of different things for, uh, for this building. We have a, um, a lot of, of needs for, uh, for different cameras and certain things that come out of that to able to give and also to, to be able to reach people online to all different parts of the world. So the Legacy Fund goes to a lot. There's going to be a video that's going to tell you more about that later, and we want you to, to check that out to know what's going on. And next, next Sunday for, uh, for Pentecost Sunday, we are going to, the goal right now is to celebrate and have our service outside. So the 8.30 service and the 9.45 are gonna be combined out there on the field. So that's the, the goal right now. Uh, if you've looked at the rain forecast this week, it's, it's quite a doozy, but uh, we're, we're goal, our goal is to be celebrating outside uh, together at the 9.45 service. So we ask you to, to join with us on that. And if you have any other things that, that you wanna know what's going on, you can go to today.mdpc.org and check out all the things that we have going on in the life of this church. So there's a lot of really great things. We are so thrilled that you're with us today. It's great to see you this morning. And uh, we're gonna ask Myra to come up. She's got a special thing for our children this morning. So just uh, welcome her up this morning. There's something that you have, it is yours, like a toy, a special toy that you have, and then your little brother, your little sister comes and they want to play with it, and you're like, no, no, this is mine. Well, today I want to talk to you about generosity, about giving. You see, I have here a canvas with the word generosity on it, and the way I feel, it's like this is my life here, this is my life. And sometimes, actually I want to say all the time, the Lord gives us blessings. And the way I see it is the more we give, yellow makes me happy. So I just chose the color yellow. But the more we give, the more we can spread his word and the more we can share his goodness and his love. Sometimes it's hard to share because we're not sure if they're gonna take care or gonna use maybe our toy properly. But we know that when we share, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 19, 17, that he who is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and God will reward you for what you have done. Don't be scared to share, friends. He wants us to love on our neighbor, to share his word, and to love on others. Will you pray with me? Lord, sometimes it's hard to share, but God, you tell us, you tell us that when we share your word, when you share a smile, kindness, when we serve others, you bless us. Help us be kind and generous. We love you and we praise you. Amen. Let's stand this morning as we continue. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. All I see is the mountain, you see the mountain through. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I'm safe with you. All right, we learned this last week. Let's sing this out together. So when I fight, I fight on my knees With my hands lifted high Oh God, the battle belongs to you And every fear I lay at your feet I'll sing through the night Oh God, the battle belongs to you And 
We're going to do it a little different. We normally have a unison corporate prayer. But I just wanted to give us some time. Close your eyes at this time. We're going to, I'm going to go ahead and lead us in this prayer. Holy Spirit, we are here. We want more of you, Lord. For the hidden things and the dark things in our hearts that are not of you. Father, we want to lift them up this morning to you. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning giving you praise and thanksgiving for all that you have done for us. Father, you see all our intentions, our strives, where we fall, both the seen and the unseen. Holy Spirit, search our hearts. Lord God, for all that we have done and left undone, Father, forgive us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, believe the good news that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. Hear from Ephesians, in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. If you believe that promise this morning, let's give him praise with our hands. Thank you, Jesus, for that forgiveness. Let's join together in worship. Shout, 
rushing wind, fire of God, fall within. Holy Ghost, breathe on us, we pray. As we repent, turn from sin, revival ember smoldering, breath of God, fan us into flame, and we need a fresh wind, the fragrance of heaven, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out.
From parking lot to playground, MDPC's Legacy Giving Program has enabled incredible improvements to our beautiful church's facilities over the years. The cosmetic changes are what you may have noticed, but the legacy funds and its spending are underpinned by something more lasting and substantial. MDPC's mission to proclaim Christ to as many people as possible. MDPC has always prized strong programming for kids, youth, and young adults. The recent overhaul of our children's spaces affected the families we minister to both through Sunday school and through weekday childcare. The little school and preschool Sunday school classrooms had not been updated in over 20 years. With Legacy Giving, we were able to remodel them and now they are an inviting place for children. We also added a parent resource wall, which has been a welcome addition to our ministry. Kids love playing with the new foosball table and air hockey table in the zone. Thanks to the generous Legacy gifts, we were able to refresh the zone as well as provide new and improved seating and sound equipment in our Galaxy large group space. Young adults didn't have a dedicated space to gather at MDPC until the 2019 remodel of three classrooms tucked at the end of an upstairs hallway. Fresh paint, a coffee bar, new couches, rugs, and wall art transformed the classes into three cozy living rooms for our young adults. Comfortable and inviting spaces allow relationships to grow and flourish, and I think the warmth of the community is now reflected in the warmth of the space. In the past four years, MDPC facilities have been able to replace 25-year-old boilers, overhaul our parking lot, and modernize campus elevators. These improvements increase both comfort and operational efficiency. Facility improvements are unsung, but so essential to prevent interruptions and provide access to all. We also want to keep that message going beyond these walls. The Legacy Gift allowed us to implement new hospitality elements to online alpha, such as care packages and DoorDash gift cards. Through the gifts, the guests felt more cared for and welcomed. More guests came on the first night and kept coming each week throughout Alpha to experience Jesus for themselves. Finally, an enormous outreach tool was placed in our lap when the world moved online in 2020. Thanks to the support of Legacy Giving, MDPC Media will be able to greatly enhance our audio and visual technology. New equipment in the sanctuary and live streaming in the chapel are just a few of the many improvements coming in 2021 all with an eye to engage our online guests and care for our in-person congregation. Legacy Funds have provided $1.9 million for ministry enhancements over the past few years. Because of your generosity, we have impacted kids and adults all over the world who have walked through our physical and digital doors in that time. The MDPC members who choose to give Legacy gifts have touched each life. Will you consider helping to continue this legacy of outreach, community care, and proclamation of the word? Off, why are you lifting up money? Don't you know that visitors think all churches do is talk about money and they're not going to come if you focus on money. It's true. Two times in the fall, we talk about money leading up to pledging on the first Sunday in November. And then here in the spring, we talk one Sunday about our legacy above and beyond the annual budget gifts. And then probably once or twice right at the end of the year, we say how we're doing regarding the budget. So at most at MDPC, we talk five Sundays out of the 52, I know that's five times too many for some of us. But here's the challenge that we can't avoid if we're believers. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17. Listen to God's Word. Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord and will be repaid in full. Here ends our reading for today. God always blesses the reading and the hearing of God's Word. A society grows great, Elton Trubud once wrote, wrote, when old men plant trees whose shade they know they'll never sit under. And a church grows great 
when she does the same, when she cares more about other people in the next generations than she does about herself. A man named Roman Bloom must never have heard about that concept. Do you know about him? If you've read the New York papers over the last couple years, you know that he was an Auschwitz a Holocaust survivor. He was a real estate magnate in Staten Island. And at 97, he died, leaving an estate of $40 million, but without an heir. And without a will. It's the largest unclaimed estate in New York State history. In fact, his best friend, Paul Skukla, said he was really smart in life, but in death, he was an idiot. They've tried to find an heir. They've looked in Poland. They've looked in Israel, but they haven't been able to find one. There have been a couple spurious wills that have been uh, sent into the court. All have been thrown out, including one from a disbarred attorney named Anthony Ellegrino II, who on February 21st, 2021, the judge threw out his lawsuit with prejudice. If they don't find an heir, if they don't find a will, it will go into the unclaimed funds that New York State has been receiving since 1943, and there's over $15 billion in that account right now. One of his friends does believe that there will be a will found, and it'll say that he wanted to have an orphanage for children in Poland or a school in Ethiopia or some positive good thing in Staten Island, but none has been discovered to this date. So let me ask you point blank, what are your plans? Have you made arrangements? Maybe you say, I'm too young to think about that, but we're never too young to think about that. Sherry and I are planning before the wedding of our kids to finally get the will and estate planning at least set up. And I was reading not too long ago about American and European different attitudes regarding health care systems. The writer said, Europeans know that they're going to die. And Americans think it's optional. <laughs> but the fact is, we're all terminal. The fact is, all of us will die the fact is, everything we possess is on loan from God. We're just handling it as stewards and caretakers. We can't take it with us. You can't take it with you. Or can you somehow, based on the Scripture I read, Proverbs 19.17 says, those who are kind to the poor lend to the Lord and will be repaid in full. That word poor in the Hebrew is not just those who are financially poor, but those who might be emotionally poor or physically poor or relationally poor or spiritually poor. Jesus talked about in the Sermon on the Mount the poor in spirit. And the Hebrew for kind there is shanan, which means those who are gracious or who stoop down to lift up those who are suffering. They, in fact, are lending to the Lord, and they'll re be repaid in full. The idea from this scripture is that God sees when we care for those in need, and when we're doing that, we're not really lending to them, we're lending to God, and God will repay not only in full, but with interest, is the idea, the sentiment from that text. There's a bunch of scriptures in the Proverbs who, that talk about the same thing. In Proverbs 28, 27, it says this, He who gives to the poor will lack nothing, but he who closes their eyes to them receive many curses. The God of the universe is so concerned about the plight of the poor that God promises 
blessings on those who align themselves with those in need, and God promises curses on those who ignore those in need. It's not so that we'll be scared or intimidated. I think it's to reveal the heart and the character of God, that God cares about those people who are struggling. We should care about those people who are struggling. If God advocates for those who are, are poor in spirit, we should advocate for those who are poor in spirit. If God's heart breaks for those people that are struggling and suffering, our heart should break for those who are struggling and suffering too. So the question becomes, how can we possess compassionate hearts? How can we have the same kind of sense that God has for people? Well, let me let me advocate or suggest that, that I think there's two basic steps. And the first step is in the second half of the passage that was just read before. So could you put it up one more time, please? He who gives to the poor will lack nothing. Here's the second part. But he who closes their eyes to them receives many curses. If we want our heart to be open for those in need, what Scripture is saying is we've got to open our eyes. And in most instances, we choose to open our eyes or not. Sometimes we'll be surprised by something we see, even though we didn't intend really to see it. That happened to me the first time I was in Ethiopia. Post-seminary, living in Ames, Iowa, two young kids, thinking we were struggling in our little Cape Cod house a block or two away from an elementary school and then we went to Ethiopia. After that, I've gone to Haiti. I've been to Malawi. I've been to first world Turkey, second world Turkey, third world Turkey. And seen part of the two plus billion people who live on two dollars a day. You can't unsee that once you've seen it. The mind stretched to a new idea, never returns to its original shape. And when I came back, I started saying to Sherry, we've got to change the way we spend our money. We've got to think differently so we have enough to at least give something out to the two plus billion people who often have more joy than we do with two dollars a day. Has something caught your eye that you can't unsee? Is there anything now that you've seen it changes the way not only that you see but the way you think and because of the way you think, perhaps the way you behave? A lawyer in a former congregation that I served in Springfield, Missouri came to my office and said, do you have 45 minutes? I said, what do you saying, yeah, I can do that. And he says, I want to take you to some place two miles away from the church, two miles away from my law office. I, I took a deposition there earlier today, and I didn't believe there was any place like this in Springfield, Missouri. We got to this neighborhood, and he said, did you ever think there was this in Springfield, Missouri? He says, what are we going to do about this? He says, I don't, I don't want to presume that you'd ask me, but if there's a task force that's put together, I'm willing to be point on it if you feel I'm worthy. It's one of those humble, bright, pillar, loved members of that congregation. I put him in charge of that endeavor, and the result of that was Victory Ministries that was reaching into that neighborhood to solve those problems in those places to give people hope and a possible future. I mean, think for most of us, most of the time, when we see something really unpleasant, our natural inclination, especially after sin, is to turn away and not look at it anymore. When I was young, there used to be that commercial that would come on TV at an, as an ad 
with Sally Struthers on it. Do you remember that? Where kids were hungry in Africa and there were flies around people's faces and some of them were too weak to swat away the flies with their arms. I remember going up to the front of the TV and turning the channel when that would come on. Embarrassed to admit it. I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to feel it. I didn't want to be sad. I didn't want to be mad. I didn't want to feel guilt. But it's only when we see that our heart increases. If you want to increase your heart, You've got to allow yourself to see things that make you uncomfortable. And there's ways to do that. Now that nursing homes have opened up, I dare you some lunchtime to go to a local nursing home, ask the person at the front desk if you can just stand by the wall in the dining room as people come in and eat and as they leave. And you'll be touched. You can't not be touched. Maybe some evening, or I double dog dare you, to go on a weekend evening to the ER closer to, closest to your house and sit in the corner for 90 minutes as people come in while they're struggling with physical pain, maybe with emotional abuse in their family, and they just want to get well, they just want help, and there's a backlog of people to get in to see the doctor, unless you say, I'm having heart pains right now. That's the magic word, to get in. And even if you say that, it's not always immediate. I triple dog dare you, to some Saturday morning to drive over between 7 a.m. and noon at our church and park where you can. Yesterday, 438 cars came through our parking lot to receive food for 438 families. And nearly 100 got the second shot, so they're fully vaccinated now. There's three rows of cars that go through the maze of our parking lot. As they do, there are signs that they pass that talk about God's love for them, that God sees them, that God cares about them. There's people who speak English and Spanish and Portuguese who come to the car windows and ask them to fill out a form, and is there anything that we can pray regarding them for? They pray for them right then. They're invited to worship services, the English speaking, the Spanish speaking, the Portuguese. And then they get over near the gym and food has been boxed up. And then as their car door is open, their back seat or their trunk is opened, food for a week is put into their car. And they say, gracias, and they mean it or thank you, and they mean it. And you probably won't be able to watch that for very long without getting next to someone and volunteering. You've seen something right here in the 024 that makes you uncomfortable. But you don't just see the the discomfort, you see a response. or I quadruple dare you to some Sunday morning before or after worship to go to the Barnes & Noble closest to you or one of the Starbucks and just sit and watch the people who are trying to have ultimate meaning in their life solved without worship of God and the resources of the faith and brothers and sisters in Christ Some of them are just fine because everything in this moment is all right. And others of them look miserable. They're isolated. They're searching in the self-help aisles just to find some idea of what to do next in their broken, 
lives because of sin. The first step to care the way God cares about us is to be willing to see the things that make you uncomfortable. The second step is in Proverbs 30, and it's these words. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. It's not just seeing the poor, but actually extending your hands to those people in need. A couple weeks ago, I was watching a, a show by Paul Newman. He was the star in it. I'm not sure what channel it was. It was a Paul Newman marathon. And I was uh, watching Cool Hand Luke, maybe one of the top five greatest movies of all time. Not arguably, it is. <laughs> but before that was The Sting, The Hustler, Color of Money. After that was going to be Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. I started asking myself, is Paul Newman still alive? Looked him up. He died in 2008. Started reading some more. He started a foundation called Newman's Own in 1982. It was one of the first whole foods, natural food situations that the world had known at that time. So his salad dressing, his pasta sauce, his lemonade, his cat food, and on and on and on. And his goal through that foundation was to give away all the profits since 1982 till today, do you know how much they've given away and how, how much they've partnered with people to help uh, hurting people? According to Wikipedia on Saturday, $550 million. Over a half a billion dollars. I came across an article where someone was saying that Newman, when he was still alive, he'd like to go to the camps in the summer for kids with cancer that had special needs and he would place himself on a seat near the lemonade stand and give people cups of lemonade. And the reporter that asked him why he did that, he said this, I write checks, I've made a will, and I serve lemonade so I can expand my heart. How do you need to extend your hand with the resources you have, probably not $550 million, to expand your heart. I saw in the last month, just waiting in line to get food here in Houston, within three miles of this church, someone in uniform getting food, someone right behind him saying, I've got your meal today, thank you for serving. It was unplanned, it was unscheduled, it was unpretentious. And those two left gliding. Corner Bakery last week, woman came in, smelled uncomfortably, talking to herself. I was way back in the line, the woman right behind her, she was trying to find enough money to get a cup of coffee, and the woman right behind her just said, I've got your coffee and I've got soup or lunch if you want it. No big deal if you don't. The woman just looked behind her and said, thank you. Unplanned, unscheduled, unpretentious. And everybody in that room said, why didn't I think of that? Why was I worried about the smell? Why did I want to know what she was mumbling? We all saw the same thing. This person extended a hand. My mother calls me every Saturday morning at 8.30. Although last Saturday, before yesterday, she forgot. And so I called her at 9. Is everything okay? And she goes, oh, your sister's here. I just forgot to call you. I'm not dead. That's what she said. <laughs> Good to know, Mom. Thank you. She called yesterday at 8.30 and she said, what's going on with Kristen's wedding and Matt's engagement, have they picked a, a date yet? And I said, well, Matt hasn't figured it out. Kristen's got hers. And, but Kristen admitted that she's going to 
Use all the bonds that you guys have given her for every birthday, $25, $50 for a Christmas, $75 for an Easter, $100 for a little bit. She's going to, you know, put them in, and then she's going to use that to help pay a portion of something for the wedding. And Matt already used his for part of grad school, and I said, thanks, Mom. She said, that's why your dad and I did it. They didn't need anything when they were five and seven and 13, but we knew 20 years later that they'd need stuff. We did it for now. Your dad would be very happy that she's using some of it for the wedding now. At the Eco National Conference a few months ago, Dana Allen, who's the head of Eco, has a vision that he wants to train a thousand vocational leaders in the next five years and 10,000 lay leaders in the next five years. There's enough seminaries for people to go or to go online, but he said, where people are failing in ministry is not because they can't preach, but they fail Monday through Saturday. They don't know how to run a session meeting. They don't know how to deal with conflict. They don't know how to build teams. They don't know how to to create a vision and then execute it and walk it out. And we're trying to figure out ways to supplement people's training, and we're wondering if a couple pivotal churches in the denomination would be host sites to be academies for that to happen. And would MDPC be interested in that, willing to do that? I said, we're not perfect, we make mistakes, but I think we have pretty good health and we've got some wise people, pastors and department directors that could help people with outreach and equipping and with worship and with all kinds of areas, youth ministry. I said, I'm going to be talking in a few weeks about legacy giving and maybe if people feel nudged to give to that, maybe we'll join you. It's not just seeing something, but according to Scripture, it's extending our hand. And it's not just doing that so that we earn salvation by doing good. It's not ultimately about us. It's about the example of God first and then God's Son second, who in 2 Corinthians 8, 9 says this, for you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Jesus, in glory, on the throne, with riches all around him, perfect community in the Trinity there, because he sees the, the mess that the world is in, the brokenness because of sin, the poverty in all the different spheres, he's willing to be born in a stable and grow up like us and die on a cross so that our sins could be forgiven and because God raised him, the Holy Spirit could come into our lives to give us hope to We've received riches upon riches upon riches so that we can consider giving a portion of that to make a difference with our one and only lives. Roman Bloom's friend, Paul Skirka, said he was really smart in life, but he died an idiot. Hope none of us have family and friends and God Say that about us. Anyone who's kind to the poor lends to the Lord and will be repaid in full with interest. Open your eyes and extend your hands. Amen. Let's pray. God, there are a lot of reasons why we don't want to give. People might not appreciate it. They might take advantage of it. They might waste it. They might not be grateful. There's so much need so near us. If we'll just see and if we'll just share. 
May that make all the difference to us and through us. Amen.
Friends, how good it is for us to be gathered together. Whether we are unmasked or masked, you are welcome here at MBPC as part of the family of faith. And we're so thankful that you are here today. Let's pray together. Please join me. Gracious God, thank you that you are a God that walks beside us. When we are full of joy, when we are full of sorrow, you are with us, you are for us, you are our God. We are your children. We thank you that you love us so passionately and so relentlessly. We thank you that you have forgiven us through Jesus Christ. And we thank you that you have given us the blessing of Christian community. And whether we gather together in person or we're joining together through the internet, we are still one family of faith joined together by the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, touch our hearts open our eyes help us to be the people that you have created us to be give us courage give us boldness and fill us with your spirit as we seek to go from this place in, in the power and in the name of jesus christ and we pray these things in his glorious wonderful and powerful name amen Thanks, Dave. Let's receive our benediction. You're able to give and help to our annual budget in the boxes at the lobby and then also online. And then legacy giving, you would talk to Ava Caliendo or Katie Cooper or myself or someone else about that legacy gift. Hebrews 11.6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. But whoever would approach him must first affirm that he exists and second, that he rewards those who desperately seek him. Seek him this week by opening your eyes and by extending your hand. Friends, go in peace. Amen. I'm Kelsey, MDPC's Director of Global Outreach. Here's some of what's coming up at MDPC. Summer means mission trips, and spots are still available. Current 7th and 8th graders kick off the mission season with a week in San Antonio, starting May 30th. We'll partner with Blueprint Ministries again to work on home builds and get to know local families. Then in June, high schoolers depart for beautiful Arkansas. Our mission work there will be a combination of construction labor and relational ministry with Student Life Camp at John Brown University. Later that month, sixth graders wrap up the summer trips with a weekend of service in our own city of Houston, and juniors and seniors have an opportunity to backpack through the mountains of Colorado. These trips are such a great time for getting to know other students, and even better than that, for taking your relationship with Jesus to a whole new level. Sign up today at youth.mdpc.org. 
Hi, I'm Rachel Poiske, Associate Pastor for Children's Ministries. We've got lots of really fun things for your preschooler this summer. We have a preschool serve day that's gonna be on May 26th. On June 26th, get all your little princesses ready for a princess preschool party. And then we also are gonna have for the boys a special boys splash day on June 30th. We can't wait to see you and your preschooler at these fun events where we can celebrate and also learn about God's word together. Don't forget that this Saturday, May 22nd, we're traveling to Iran for a virtual mission trip with PARS Theological Center. God has been doing some incredible things in Iran recently. Despite outright persecution, Christianity in that country is growing faster than ever, and it's creating a hunger for God's word that feels like something out of the book of Acts. This is such an exciting time in God's kingdom, and I hope you'll join me to hear more about it. Visit virtualtrip.mdpc.org for more details. You know that friend that said they'd never set foot inside a church? Well, bring them next Sunday and 945 service plus the 1115 Spanish service will be held outdoors on the MDPC field. All the morning services will be live streamed online, but we hope that you'll join us in person for Houston's beautiful spring weather. You can see lots more ways to get involved by visiting events.mdpc.org. Also, follow us on social media for prayer requests, event updates, and all things MDPC.